interested in business blogging and probably make some money from it. Okay, can I first assume that all of you have some knowledge of WordPress? Know how to use WordPress? Okay, who, who do, don't know anything about WordPress? Trying to find out more here. Okay, good. So first of all, who the heck is me? Well, I'm a tech enthusiast. Okay, people call me a geek. And I used to be a WordPress developer, but now I'm mainly doing a lot of plugins for my own sites. And I'm a writer. I we write a lot of uh, tech stuff, a lot of uh, uh, how-to tutorial, a lot of uh, technology stuff, reviews. And yes, I'm an editor as well. So something about my own site make tech easier. Yeah, it's a tech site that focus on how-to tutorials, hacks, tips and tricks. And okay, how this site come about is in 2007, I actually started a blog called Make That Easier. I use it as a documentation for my own learning. Okay, I learned Linux, Windows, Mac. I just want to have a place to put all the tutorial in so I can refer it next time. And now it's an online publishing company. I have 28 staff and it's a global company. We have a lot of uh, visitors from US, India, Europe. And we cover a lot of topics including Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, web services, hardware guide, and even WordPress. And yes, we publish about three to five articles every day. And we have over two million page view every month. So, so actually from a personal blog, it grew become a international company, publishing company. And this is how the site looks like, the website, uh, maketechisier.com. Okay, so to get started, let's understand what I mean by uh, business blogging. Okay, uh, we know you can just easily set up a WordPress site, you can start a personal blog, just write about it. But then if we talk about business blogging, we have an aim to increase visibility and brand awareness of your existing business. So for example, you're having an e-commerce site. So how do you drive traffic to the site? You start a blog, you increase awareness, and increase your brand visibility. Alternatively, business blogging can be used as a way to build a business out of your blog. So as for instance, my own blog is a personal blog. I started as a personal blog, but it grew to become a business by itself. So now we focus on blogging for the business side. So in short, business blogging is about building your own money printing machine. So you can make money while you're sleeping. So to get started, it's actually very easy. You need a blog to get started. So get a domain, get a web host, install WordPress, set up teams, set up plugins. Okay, that's all. Okay, that's all from my talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some, some consideration while setting up your site. Okay, I call it the UGS approach. The site needs to be user-friendly. I'll talk more about that later. Okay. The site needs to be Google-friendly. Of course, Google will be your main traffic source. So you need it to be Google friendly, or probably also other search engine like Bing, Yahoo, and so on. And the S stands for social media. So these are the three things you need to be focused on, the user, the search engine, and the social media. So what do we mean by the user friendliness? So you have to ask, is the site easy to navigate? So from one page to another page, can the user easily go? Or do they have to hunt for the link? Is the font big enough to read? I think the default font nowadays is about 16 pixel. Some even go up to 18 or 20 pixel. So, so make sure the font size is big enough. So does the site color scheme and the font color provide enough contrast? So lastly, is uh, can the user contact you? Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be a user, it can be a sponsor, advertiser, or anyone. So 
So is that a mean to contact you? And lastly is, when the people who come to your site, they like your content, is there a way for them to subscribe to your content? The subscription can be by email, can be by social media follow updates. So Google friendliness, what do you mean by Google friendliness? Yes, it's the site indexable by Google. Can the Google see your site? So it's the content optimized for Google. So is it SEO, the search engine optimized? So it's a site loading speed fast enough. Okay, one thing Google take put a uh, major, they, they actually take the loading speed into factor, in the big factor for your search engine ranking. Okay, so you need your site to load fast enough. And social friendliness, we're talking about how easy can a user share your content. So do you have all those share buttons? You know, it's like you see it everywhere in your site, on others' website. So do you have it on your own site? So do you have Facebook account? Do you have a Twitter account so people can access to it? It's sad to say you have to manage a lot, a lot of accounts nowadays, not only your WordPress blog. So you have to manage your WordPress, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Pinterest, everything, a lot of things. So you have to provide a way for them to assess it. So when the flood, okay, what do you mean by flood? Flood is the traffic. So let's say you have a viral article and uh, a lot, a lot of traffic comes in. They will come in instantly. Probably in one hour, you have 10,000 hits. So when that happens, can your server really handle the loads? Or you will crash. So when you need the traffic most, your site crashed. You don't want that to happen. So you have to you have to make sure that your site really focused on the UGS approach, the user friendliness, search engine, and the social approach, social media approach. So next for the teams, We're talking about setting up your WordPress, selection of teams. Yeah. Uh, my advice is if you are talking about for your first site, you don't really bother about the teams, the user design part so much. Okay, you can tweet on that later on. But there are a lot of teams, free teams you can use from a WordPress team directory. The premium teams you can use. Elegant team, WP Zoom, Studio Press, a lot of premium teams you can use out there. So if you are a developer, you can try out Genesis, it's a developer friendly teams. Or even there are a lot of uh, site builders. So you can site origin, beaver, there are plugins you can Install, you can actually build your site, so create your own sites. Okay. Personally, I will say that some of the teams in the free, the WordPress team directory, they are quite good. So you can use them, they can allow you to customize the look and feel of it. So for the plugin and the web service that I will recommend, yes, uh, Google Analytics is a must for every website, it tracks all the traffic. And the SEO plugins, I would recommend the WordPress SEO. Of course, there are several others, like all in one SEO. Okay, but this one is the one that I rec recommend. Okay, contact form. The thing about WordPress is it doesn't come with a contact form. And you need people to contact you. So you, you have to con install a contact form plugins. Yeah, contact form 7, Ninja form, WP form, a lot of forms out there. Catching, yes, this is the part where you want to handle the traffic. Okay, when the flood comes in, the catching plugin can help you to manage it. So there are W3 Total Catch, Super Catch, or WP Rockets, all that you can use. Okay, site optimization, this is to improve your loading speed. Okay, the lazy loads, so the image don't load until you scroll down. The opto optimize. It minify all your HTML so your file size is smaller. So image optimization, you want your site to load fast, you want the image to be big enough but not too big. Big enough to see but not too heavy. So WP Smash, PixPy or Kraton, they can help you to optimize the image on the fly. 
when you upload them, the image they will optimize in the backend and save it. So social sharing, yeah, you need all those social buttons. Yeah, share this, Sumo, they are quite good. Okay, you want a way for your subscriber to subscribe to your content. Yeah, you need a newsletter services. Okay. And a newsletter opt-in form as well. Okay. Okay, this is quite important in this HTML5 era. Okay, the schema. Okay, schema, they are the markup text that inform the search engine. So what the content are. So for example, if you go to Google, you search for a movie, probably the Tor. You, you know the IMDB, they have this rating of how many stars this thing have, this, this movie have. There is the schema markup. So you put the schema markup, the Google can know what content it is, how many rating you give, or is the food, if you are a food blog, about is the food nice or not kind of thing. Okay, it's, it's pretty useful. Yeah, you want your site to load fast, so you need a CDN, a content delivery network. Yeah, some of the one, some of the network you can use is a key CDN. Cloudfront is by Amazon. Yeah, it's quite reliable, a bit expensive though. And Jetpack, Jetpack is by WordPress.com. Yeah, you contain a lot, a lot of things, a lot, a lot of modules. Yeah, including your social sharing, your comments, a lot of things. So it's quite useful to have it. Okay, now once you have your site set up, you need to do some off-site preparation as well. Yeah, you need to verify your blog URL with Google. W what this means is let Google know about your existence. Okay, so you submit your URL to the Google Webmaster and also your sitemap. Sitemap is a, a list of your posts so Google can index your content. Okay, the WordPress SEO can do all these things for you. So install that plugin. The same thing with Bing, search engine Bing. And you need to set up your robot tags. Okay, this is a way for Google to know what content to index and what is confidential and do not index. Okay. And of course you need to set up accounts. As I say, you have to prepare for a lot of lot of uh, Different to many different social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, a lot. Okay. So eventually you might need a social media manager to do it for you if your site gets very popular. And also you probably need a email marketing company. Something like MailChimp, MailerLite, a Weber. Okay. Uh, MailChimp, they are free for two thousand subscribers. MailerLite is free for 1,000 subscribers, so sign up with them, start your email marketing as well. So to get started, okay, there are two, two pages you have to create when you first get started. First is the About Us page. Okay, before you create any other post, create this first. Talk about yourself, why people want to know about you. Okay, people, will, people will really check out your About Us page. So when they come to your site, they like your content, first thing they'll do is, who is this guy talking about? Who is this guy? Who is this company behind this blog? See? The other one is the contact us page. So sponsors, advertisers, or even users, they will contact you, provide a way for them to contact you. Later on, if the site gets more popular, you might want to create a privacy policy page. Okay, this is probably a must. Google will really take note of this. Okay, you have to let the user know you are collecting data. Definitely you are. If you are serving advertisements or collecting email address, you are collecting data about them, you have to let them know. It's part of the law. And also of the term of use page. Okay. So if your site is very small and no traffic, the privacy policy and the top of you can do it later on. Okay. But if your site getting to have a lot of traffic, it's better to have these two pager to safeguard your ass, okay? You don't want some company to sue you for collecting data or what. So lastly, start blogging. Simple. <laughs> Correct? Simple, right? So just get started. 
So we're talking about how to get started. So the second part will be how to make money from it. So for me to be successful in the business blogging, we always follow three steps, a CTM rule. Create content, drive traffic, and monetize. Okay. You have to do it in this sequence. You cannot monetize first, then you do content. Okay. You cannot get traffic first without any content. So you have to write content, provide content, then you can drive traffic because there's something to show. And with a traffic, you can monetize. So when you talk about content, a lot of time people ask me, what should I block? Okay, there are a lot of things to block, but what can I block? So first of all, if you, are, if you have an e-commerce site or if you have a physical product to sell, talk about your product. Okay, your blog should be about your product. Talk about tutorials, usage guide, tips and tricks. For example, if you are selling toys, you can talk about uh, thank toys for the Halloween or the best way to do the best toys for the kids under three, something like that. One of the way to find out what to write is of course doing keyword research. Some of the way the Google Keyword Planner that is used by the Google AdWords. Okay, you can see what people are searching. Google Trends, Word Stream, the Moss Keyword Explorer. The Moss Keyword Explorer is paid product, so you have to pay for that. But the rest, they are free. So just to give you an example. So this is the Google Trend page. So you can see, you can categorize by different categories, business, entertainment, health, if not, just look at the general trend. Scroll down, you can see why the story trending now. Sports or people about sports or Michael Jackson. Huh? So it gives you a rough idea of what is the topic, popular topic now, so you can write about it to catch the trend. Okay, one thing what I like to do is always to check out your competitors. Okay, I'm sure what niche, depending on what niche you are, I'm sure you have competitors. Check them out, what are they writing about? Okay, so they have done a research, just follow them, just copy them. Okay, but don't copy the exact same words. <laughs> Take the same topics, have your own twist, write, write out differently, publish it. Okay, this is another feature that I like, the Google Autocomplex feature. Just to give you an example. Now, if you go to Google site, for example, I type WordPress. So you can see, it can show you what people are searching about, popular topics. Okay, WordPress. Oh, people are searching for logins, downloads, theme. Okay, let's say themes. And um, what is about teams? Oh, I can talk about WordPress team, free teams. Give me an idea, I can write about 10 best free WordPress team. It give you a good idea. Or uh, for example, WordPress team portfolio. Uh, a lot of people are searching for WordPress team portfolio. So you can write about 10 best portfolio WordPress team. So it very give you a very good idea of what to write. And one thing, the last thing is really, really ask your reader. Okay, you just publish a, assuming you have a lot of traffic, just publish a post, what do you want to read? Next, you'll be surprised that people will tell you what they want. This can be in your newsletter, so if you are sending newsletter, you can send a newsletter out, say, we are doing a survey, okay, tell us what do you want to read. Then, they will tell you all, you have a lot of topic to write about. Okay, next thing is uh, how fragrant should you blog? I mean, how many posts do you publish? 
for our site, we publish three to five articles per day. So, but how many do you, should you do? So depending on your niche, uh, preferably it's a minimum of three articles per week. Okay, you want to let Google know that your site is active. You want to let your user know that this site is active. Okay. Of course, if you are talking about straight times, news at newspaper, okay, do you expect to read only one article every day? You don't. So it really depends on your niche and topics. Okay. But it's good to have at least a three article per week. And how much how long do you write? Okay. So once again it depends on your niche. Okay. You can go as long as two thousand words or more. Okay. Or if you are just talking about quick news or gossip, probably about hundred words, two hundred words. Okay. But Google do actually rank article with more words. So minimum of about four hundred words would be the best the minimum. Okay, one thing is that the frequency and the content length, they are quite going hand in hand. If you have one article, if you publish a long article every time, you can have less frequency. If you publish like a news article, short one, probably you will need more, publish more. So they always go hand in hand. People really expect less when they read more things. Of course, it's good if you can write a long article and publish frequently. It's good, okay. But people can people can expect lesser with a more detailed article. So there's no hard rule on the word count. So your article you should always ask is the content relevance. Is the content detailed enough? So is the content useful for a reader? So. My experience tell me that the tutorial base and the list article, the roundups, ten of the best, five best, this kind of list article, they usually perform the best. So the last thing is, is the content better than your competitors? So even if you are copying from them, are you able to write better than them? Okay. Okay. So we're done with the content part. Now it's the traffic generation. Okay, there are a few source of traffic search engine. Okay, you never want to miss out on this. It will be your major traffic, especially Google. Your email newsletter. Okay, it's actually the second highest traffic source for my site. Okay, so make sure you have a mailing list. Your referrals, if you are writing guest posts or link from other blogs, forums. And one of the best ways is to go to Quora, the Q&A site. People ask questions. If you see relevant to your niche, answer it, put a link back to your site. Okay, definitely to a relevant tutorials. It's a very good way to drive traffic. And of course, social media. So these are the four main sources that you should take note of. So make sure your content is search optimized. So start a mailing list and send a daily or weekly newsletter to your subscriber. Write guest posts. So participate in forum discussions. Okay, and update your social media account with your articles. So you need to tell people what to do. So tell them. Please share my content. Please share, please share, please share, and they will share. Okay. And now, if you have a extra budget and you can advertise, Google AdWords, Facebook, Twitter. I think for content-based article, it's good in Facebook and Twitter. For product-based article, it's good in Google AdWords. So they are quite different. So something to know about your Google search results. Okay. Now, if you optimize your content, doesn't mean you rank number one. See, so everyone is using the same plugin to optimize their content. So everyone's content is optimized. So how does Google gauge which one to go first? 
So even if you optimize your content, it doesn't mean you'll be number one. A lot of factors, the three main factors, your site age, how long have this site been around? The reputations, okay, is it, do you have a malware in your site or is it publishing a lot of uh, negative stuff, okay, a reputation? Number of inbound links, how many sites actually link to you? So they play a very major factor in search ranking. So the Google actually take note of these few factors before they look at the content. So if you are ranking number one in the search, search page, search result page, and rank number two, it makes a lot of difference. The traffic probably is a different for 50%. And if you are listing in the first page and the second page, make even more difference. You probably won't get any traffic from the second page. So your aim is to become the first, okay? If not the second, aim for the first. So you have your content, you have your traffic. The last thing is monetization. It's actually very easy once you have a traffic. No traffic, no money. Have traffic, you do anything, also make money. Some of a way, if you are selling product, you already have your own business, own e-commerce, just put a call to action. Please buy my products. Okay. One of the way that high tr highly trafficked site do is add advertisement on the site. Okay. This is one of the way to make money. Don't use it as the main way. Don't use it as the primary way of making money. Because advertisement only make money only, only worth it when you have a high traffic site. So sponsorships. For us, we do a lot of uh, sponsored reviews, review software, re reviews hardware, a lot of time that we charge for it. Affiliate marketings, refer to other products, other people's products, make money. Email marketings, yes, we do make money from our email list. Okay, so that's a good way to make money as well. Okay, you can create your own products, selling ebooks, courses, webinar any other software, any other things. Okay. Of course, you can be a uh, physical product as well, but personally, I prefer digital products. Okay. There is no inventory to take care of. Okay. And drop shipping, if you, are, if you really want to sell physical product, but you don't want to own your own stuff. Okay. Okay. So the golden advice is, it's actually very easy to be successful. You only need consistent and persistent. Okay. You can start today, doesn't matter, okay, but you have to be consistent and you have to persist. Because as I say, Google, check your site age, mean how long have you been around. You start today and you're around probably one year, two years later, you rank high. Okay. It's not that immediate you make money, but if you are consistent and persistent, you will eventually. Okay. Okay, that's all. Really, really, that's all. <laughs> so, any questions? Anyone have a question for Mr. Damien? Okay. Uh, I would uh, like to ask you uh, for content distribution. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, for content, distribution is a great issue, right? So how do you guys distribute your content? I mean, the blog or other form of content? Uh, we, we update to our social media account. We have quite a lot of uh, big followers. Uh, we have a lot of followers for our site. So we update to our social media accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, we publish newsletter. And we actually notify a lot of the blogs with, we have liars with. So sometimes they do mention our site as well. Uh, I'm working in a WordPress product company. So I'm looking after the content uh, and marketing team, uh, the whole. So in our case, we find it very difficult to distribute the content. I mean, we are also posting uh, over the Twitter, Facebook, and other platform uh, LinkedIn as well, but the thing is, uh, you don't get that much uh, traffic from the 
content you just share, right? So is there any trick that you guys are uh, following for distributing the content in a better way? No, one thing you must know is that not every content yeah, 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 sure. is good, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are some, it's like normal. Some, some content are meant to go viral. Like if you are creating an infographic, they tend to go viral very easily. Mm -hmm. So you can actually contact a lot of blogs, mm -hmm. a lot of other sites to help them to share your contents. So the trick is to create content that people will want to share. Okay, rather right. than just That's right. thinking about sharing to Facebook. So even if you share to Facebook, Twitter, not everyone will click on it because it's not interesting. So from which platform do you get, get the most uh, traffic? I mean, for your company, which platform work best? For my company, for my site, actually, we work with a lot of other blogs. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the most effective methods. Mm -hmm. So every right. time we publish some stuff, we will inform them, and sometimes we'll just link up links back. It actually uh, works best for even for better than Facebook or even Twitter. Do you also think uh, that a uh, newsletter is a great way to distribute the content? Because we find newsletter, from newsletter we get the higher uh, conversion rate and also Yeah, correct. Newsletter rate. is a good way as well. Yeah. But newsletter is only for people who already subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you still need to reach out to people who have not heard of your, si of your site as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, David. I uh, enjoyed the talk. So you mentioned inside there was a way to monetize via email marketing. So how do you actually monetize your email marketing part? So okay, emails, newsletter, you can add call to actions. So talk about your, your products, okay, get them to buy, put a big buy now buttons. Okay. Or you can actually put affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing in your email newsletter. Or uh, we, we, we do sell ebooks as well. So uh, email newsletter is the best way to, for us to promote our ebooks and we sell it as well. And one thing about your email marketing is you can do a repeat sales. Keep sending a lot of uh, sales material to your subscriber. Thank you. uh, what's your view of this? Uh, you know, you talk about guest blogging. So, are we still able to like post the same blog in someone else's blog, which was previously published in our, you know, uh, no, I, d I don't advise that. For me, when I'm doing guest blogging, I will write uh, a better at content that I will usually write for my own site. So far, I will put the best content in other sites rather than my own site. The reason is that when people read the other site, the reader of the other blog, when they read the article, they have to feel obliged to visit your own site. Okay? So you have to write a better content to convince them to come over to your site. Hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Yeah, okay, thanks for the talk. You, you mentioned earlier that you have grown uh, make, tech easy, make Tech easier to an yep. uh, organization of 28 people. And I'm interested to find out, you know, in terms of your ops distribution, how do you actually um, tie the responsibility to these 28 people across the, across the block to you maintain this um, property? You mean what? You mean maintain the different... Yeah, correct. Roles. Yeah, so how do you come to a point to say that, okay, I need 28 people, and then what do these 28 people do? Okay, uh, a big proportion of the, my 28 staff, they are writers. So, so we do have a system for them to write, to select on the topic to write. So we do have editors who really edit work before they go live. So we do have our own system to, to handle it. Okay. I think that's the topic that I talked about last last year work camp. <laughs> uh, so we do have uh, our own system so when a writer comes in they will choose a topic to write. Then once they write they will submit for 
reviews, the editor will do the job of reviewing and sharing it for the publication. Yeah. So we do have a social media manager who after the site, after the article went live, they will take, take the article and link it to a different social media account. Yep. Okay. Hi. So you mentioned that you get do get uh, engagement from sp sponsorships review. I mean, how do you engage uh, them and to get a uh, review? And also, you do mention that email marketing that generates income, uh, the most income, right? So, do you actually sell products uh, through the email mar marketing? Thank you. Okay, we do the product in the email of course you can't you can't really do transaction in the email but email is a way to to link the user back to your site or even to a product that you are trying to sell so we do in our daily newsletter we do put in some affiliate marketing uh, some tech product there on a discount so when they see hey there's a discount they buy it with a sales of, of a, a, a part of a sales commission so we do provide free ebooks, which actually when they download the ebook, we get paid for that. So it's free. So they got it for free, but we got paid for that. Okay. So for even for our own ebooks, we just mention it. Uh, we just launched a new ebook. So they come over, interested, they will buy as well. So that's how we make money from email marketing. What's your first question again? <laughs> or oh, sponsorship. Yeah, uh, the thing is, uh, for our side, we don't really actively go and find sponsorship. Uh, the sponsor come to us. So every day we do receive a lot of emails uh, asking for reviews of their products. So, so we actually filter them out and only select a few who are good. And yeah, from there on, we, we negotiate the cost with them and we write a review. So that only happen when you have a high traffic site. Okay. Of course, when you are when you are just starting out, you can do sponsored review, but the sponsor, the, the advertiser will ask how many people are visiting your site. Is it worth it to to publish on your site? You get what I mean? Yeah. But it's a it's a way to make money when your site grows. Um, hi. How do you build a network of uh, blog, blog bloggers that that um, that will care, carry your content? Um, so if you are going to start, uh, if I'm going to start now, um, you know, fresh, how do I then reach out to bloggers of a similar interest uh, and build the net network? One of the ways is to start reading their blogs. Okay, start reading their blogs and find out more about them. Okay, so start to know more about them and start to comment on their site and start to email them. Okay, giving some feedbacks. Okay, once you receive the trust, you can then start to suggest can I guest blog on your site? Or maybe just ask them can you share this content? Okay, one of the ways that one of my users do to me. He keep comments on every every article that I publish. So until then, oh, I know who is he. So when he emailed me for anything, I would say almost say yes. So he asked me, hey, can you help me to publish this post? I say, okay, I trust you. I help him to publish his post. So that's a good way. So keep commenting on his side until he know you. <laughs> or keep pestering him in a way, in a good way, until he know you. Um, I understand that you started from a blog. So how long did it take for you to grow from a blog to your website today? I will say that uh, when I first started out in 2007, the landscape is a bit different from now. Now it seems that everyone is starting to blog. But at 2007, actually, few people really know about blogs. Not even WordPress. It just, it's a, 
very first initial stage of WordPress. So at that time, the strategy used is different from now. Okay, but it probably take about one year for me to start making money or to break even. I would say to break even and to hire my first staff. Probably about one year. Uh, hi, thanks for the spe uh, speech. I just want to ask like a marketing kind of question. I think, uh, do you feel that like in the next three years forward, uh, email marketing and Google search or SEO wise is the best way forward because it's so saturated right now, right? Everyone is trying to do it. And uh, now there are so many new channels such as like Medium, Quora, or even Facebook bots itself. Do you see about that? Okay, for when I first started, Google is the give me the most traffic. 10 years now, Google is still give me the most traffic. So I will say 10 years later, probably they will still give me the most traffic. Okay, so uh, unless people change in their habits of they don't search anymore, if unless uh, that happen, you will still need to rely on Google. Okay, so definitely you can use other strategy like Quora, okay, but it's not as efficient as Google. Okay, they still give you the probably about forty to fifty percent, or even seventy percent of the traffic. Okay. Uh, as a starter, you still have to get into the first page. Uh, okay, just depending on your depending on the topics, on the niche. Okay, if you're talking about a very popular niche, uh, quite difficult. Okay, probably in a a very tight niche, a very small niche, you probably can get into the first page. So I just I just want to ask you about sponsorship because normally um, sponsor you get paid to talk about the product. So um, do you have difficulty when you uh, have a post sponsor at the reader? I know that okay, guy is paid for that. So might be the content is not very good, or he purposely why uh, write it to get the money. Um, how do you feel about the traffic of the the content that you got sponsor? Uh, we, we do declare that there is a sponsored post. So before the user click it, they will know that this is a sponsored post. And yeah, it's, it's to let the user, but we do let them know that even though this is a sponsored post, the review is unbiased. So we can talk bad things about that as well. So we do tell that to the sponsor and they say, okay, just do the full review. Okay, is that all? Okay, oh, there's one more. One more. Yes. So to manage a team of writer and the website, you know, what's the most challenging part of? What's the most challenging part to manage a team of uh, writers? Challenging, but actually we set up a system, so it's not that challenging anymore. So it, everything is systemized. So we do have a pool of writers, so big enough to cover our article count, article count every day. The challenging part is when we first started, first started when we first hire our first writer. Uh, we don't have enough cash to hire the second one, so we we rely a lot on the first writer to come out with articles. So when he don't submit article, I feel very stressed. <laughs> okay. Uh, but as we increase our headcount, yeah, the stress getting less and lesser. Okay, so thank you. Yes. Thank you, Damien. So now we'll proceed out for lunch. Uh, the lunch